Hello, folks. Once again, welcome to A Voice in the Desert. Today, we're going to be speaking about who or what is mammon? Who or what is mammon? Usually, when we hear the word mammon, you know, to me, it comes first thing that comes to mind is uh, the Sermon on the Mount. Okay? The Sermon on the Mount is the longest and the fullest continued discourse of our Savior that we have upon record in all the Gospels of the Bible. Today we'll be talking about who or what is mammon. Why have I chosen to talk about mammon? I have chosen to speak about mammon because it is one of the most controversial verses that have been interpreted in many ways and some in an antichrist way have used the following verse to destroy the church and its image. You know, it's a shame that people will go ahead and use the same word of God to go ahead and try to destroy the church, that which he created, okay? Um, the Sermon on the Mount starts in Matthew 5-7, but we're going to focus on a very specific verse on Matthew 6-24, okay? There are several interpretations in this verse in different Bible versions. In the NIV version, okay, uh, chapter 6, verse 24 of Matthew, in the NIV version, it says the following, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. However, we're going to focus on the King James Bible version. In the King James, it says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon okay this is the first time where we hear the word mammon within the king james version on the sermon on the mount in matthews okay it's fascinating to note that jesus has much to say about money many will be surprised that jesus spoke about money more times than he spoke about heaven and hell in fact he talked about money more than any topic except the kingdom of god 11 of the 39 parables in the scripture talks about money. Money is in our minds most of the time. One of our biggest worries that many have is surrounding the topic of money. Money seems to, seems to be the universal symbol for greed. Jesus used this topic because we can all relate to it. We need money to survive. We all have an inner desire to have more and more more most Christians that read this version of the King James version of Matthew 624 interpret mammon as money also but what is peculiar peculiar okay is that mostly all other versions in the Bible say money or it's equivalent to money however the King James version says mammon and it's mentioned in lowercase though we know that the word mammon is a proper name it's a noun when we dig deeper into the meaning of mammon which appears in the new testament borrowed from the aramaic language it says mamona an emphatic form of the word mammon which stands for wealth or profit i started to dig even deeper because it is too much of a coincidence that god would use the word mammon instead of the simplest term or its equivalent to money. Guess what turned up in my further investigation, especially in my prayer time, and seeking the answer and true meaning of mammon before the Holy Spirit. It also showed up in the Bible, okay? In one of the other Gospels of Luke, in Luke 16, verse 9. And it says the following, And I say unto you, Make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, of the mammon of unrighteousness, that ye, that when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. In this version of the Gospel of Luke, he says, Make to yourselves the friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. Bingo! Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this revelation, okay? Don't make yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. This, to me, sounds like a person, an entity, 
Why? Because you don't become friends with an object. Why? Because an object can't speak, converse with you, or much less move. And I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here. What I'm trying to say is that you can, ha you can have a relationship only with a person, someone that can respond back to you. We look like idiots if we try to have a relationship with a dollar bill. If that were possible, we will be sent to the looting bin for being crazy. In Luke 16, 11, if, there, if therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteousness mammoth, who will commit to your trust the true riches? In this verse, also as in the previous verse, they refer to the unrighteousness of mammon. My understanding is that the wealth has been personified. Why would it be personified? In order for something to be personified, it has to be compared to someone. If we know what mammon, if we know that mammon is opposite of God, can then only be one person that is opposite to what God is. And that would be Satan. That would be the only thing that could be opposite to God would be Satan. However, if it were Satan, God would have mentioned or given another name associated with Satan. We also know that when Satan or his minions are mentioned in the Bible, the names are written in lowercase. Now that explains why mammon is spelled in lowercase. Another time when I found an entity, a minion, or a demon of Satan mentioned by name is Belial. Wow. This, this is not a coincidence that the Lord in the previous weeks had made me write about this demon in which is spoken about in one of our podcasts named Belial the Demon. I said to myself, God, are you taking me somewhere? You want me to reveal something to your people or make them aware of something? It's not a coincidence that you drove me to this message, that particularly verse in Matthew 6, 24, which is part of one of the greatest and all encompassing sermons that Jesus has given, which is the Sermon on the Mount. Okay, here it goes. So if God drove me to write about Belial, then this name Mammon must be a demon also. So I continued in this revealed truth, and I discovered that in the fourth century, Mammon was related to greed, and greed as evil demons that enslaves. Also, during the Middle Ages, Mammon was referred to as the demon of wealth and greed. Another place where it is evident of the evilness of the causes of Mammon is in Revelations 18, 1 through 24. And it's talking about the fall of Babylon. Let's go ahead and read uh, Revelations chapter 18, 1 through 24. Look that up in your Bibles. And here we go. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils. So Babylon has become the habitation of the devils. And here it also says, and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk the wine of the wrath of our fornications, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of our sins, and that ye receive not her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled to her double, how much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no tomorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. 
and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning after standing afar off for the fear of her torment saying alas alas the great city of Babylon the mighty cry for in one hour is thy judgment come and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her for no man buyeth their merchandise and more the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thine wood and all thy mine vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of the most precious woods and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and the souls of men. And the fruits that thou so lusted after are departed from thee, and all these things which are daintly and godly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment weeping and wailing and saying alas alas the great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls for in one hour so great riches is come to naught and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning saying what city is like unto this great city and they cast dust on their heads and cried weeping and wailing and saying alas this great city where which we were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reasons of her costliness for in one hour she is made desolate rejoice over her thou heaven and ye holy apostles and prophets for God hath avenged you on her and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall the great city of Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And the voice, harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsmen of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. The light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Wow. That was revelations. So we can see the calamity that is caused by mammon, because of greed, because of money. In Luke 16, 13, no servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon cannot produce peace in us, and it certainly cannot produce righteousness. A love of money shows that we are out of balance with our relationship to God. Proverbs 8.18 Speak of true lasting riches with me, our riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. Jesus teaches us in Matthew 6, 19-34, not to worry about our physical needs, about houses, our clothes, or food, but to seek first the kingdom and its righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Which is in verse 33. The more I read, the more I am convinced it's a demon spirit, just like Belial, Belzebub, Jezebel, Baal, Asherah, all are mentioned in the Bible by name. In the end of days, now we know why God spoke about money and being good stewards of the same. Why? Because money is the root of all evil. Here is where we find this verse in 1 Timothy 6.10. 1 
for the love of money is the root of all evil. While some covet it after, they have erred from their faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Basically, what this is telling you, those that fell in love and went after money, um, they dropped away from the faith. Okay? They forgot about God. They put their trust and their eyes on money. Okay? And the only way that can be done is by a spirit luring a person away, the soul of a human, away from God. That cannot be done by an object. It can only be influenced by a spirit. Our Lord and Savior, in His infinite wisdom, knew what He was going. He knew what was going to be the devil's favorite instrument to enslave and kill humans. And that is greed, money, avarice, etc. Why greed? Because it would take your faith away from God and place it in your and place the trust in yourselves. And the demon of the money, the root of all evil, is mammon. Jesus knew that the ultimate means of Satan to destroy mankind was going to be through money. That's why Satan implements the following in the end of days. And this is mentioned in Revelation 13, 16. And he caught us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hands or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save that he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of man, and his number is six hundred three scores and six. That is translated to the most wicked number we can ever hear in this world and in the afterlife. That number is 666. That is the number of the beast. Anyone who receives the mark of the beast is condemned for all eternity to hell. That's right. The minute you receive that mark, you're going to be condemned to hell. And you will not see the riches of heaven. Why hell? Because when you take the mark of the beast, you made a pact with the devil that he will be your provider and your keeper for just a short while. Just because we couldn't endure that trial and tribulations, okay, which is going to happen, okay, uh, when the mark of the beast is implemented, means that you're not going to be able to do nothing. Why? Because it's going to control the whole monetary system worldwide. You're not going to be able to buy. You're not going to be able to sell. That means you can buy food. You can not sell food. means you can make money. Okay? means you can't go to the doctor because you can't pay for services. So that means you're going to suffer a lot. Okay? Um, so, why? Jesus knew that the ultimate means of saying to destroy us was going to be through money. So that's how come he gave it to us in a straight language in Revelation 13, 16. Okay? But ye know that if you would have declined the beast's number, it will cost you your life. But you would gain your soul for all eternity with Christ because you acknowledge who your provider is. And that is the one and only our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Only his love would save us from taking that mark. And only his love would protect us from the evil one. For the power and glory is all his forever and ever. Amen. Okay, people, now we know who Mammon is. Mammon is the demon of greed, the demon of money. This is the even more reason to depend on the Lord solely and depend on him totally for all our provisions. The Lord will never leave us or forsake us. For when I say us, I'm talking about those who had confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior. Lord uses us to speak life, not death. Okay? So if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, okay, you're going to be saved and he's going to be looking after you. 
He's going to be protecting you, having his coverage over you, and have angels over you. But if there is anyone here that is listening and wants to leave off the old self behind, and this message has shown you that some needed change has to take place, and you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your, as your Savior, or you ran away from God for whatever reason, and you want to reconcile yourself back to Him, then I advise you, let's pray this salvation prayer. And the reason I say this is because we're talking about the end of days. I can tell you right now, brothers, we're living them. We're seeing them. We hear it in the radio. We see it in the news. We feel it in our flesh, okay? We see how society has degraded so badly, how the families have been attacked, okay? How values, okay, holy values are not, are not spoken about, okay? They are replaced with all types of immorality. And this is an immoral world, okay? So if you know that you have never served Jesus Christ, if you have never given your heart to him, you know yet you're one step away from being dropped into hell. Just one step away. That can be today. That can be one minute from now. That can be tomorrow. We never know. We know about today, but we don't know about tomorrow because tomorrow has not been granted to us yet. That has not been promised to us. So, brothers, if you want to make this salvation prayer, just repeat after me. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge to you that I am a sinner and I am sorry for my sins and the life that I have lived. I need your forgiveness. I believe that you only begotten son, Jesus Christ, shed his precious blood on the cross at Calvary and died for my sins. And now I am willing to turn from my sin. You said in your holy word, Romans 10, 9, that if we confess the Lord our God and believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead, we shall be saved. Right now, I confess Jesus as the Lord of my soul. With my heart, I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. This very moment, I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And according to his word, right now, I am saved. Thank you, Jesus, for your unlimited grace, which has saved me from my sins. I thank you, Jesus, that your grace never leads to license, but rather it always leads to repentance. Therefore, Lord Jesus, transform my life so that, that I may bring glory and honor to you alone and not to myself. Thank you for dying for me and giving me eternal life. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if you have honestly and earnestly prayed this prayer, I want to congratulate you because you, just, you just have been saved. And there's a party in heaven every time there's somebody that has accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. So there's a big party going on if you have accepted Jesus Christ and you've reconciled himself to him. Okay? Once again, I want to thank you. Thank you for joining us A Voice in the Desert. My name is Caesar, and I'm a voice in the desert. Hi, all. We didn't want to let you go without giving you our schedule, okay, uh, and where we're located. Our schedule of our podcast is every Wednesdays. I want you to come and listen to a new refreshing word from God. You can find us in the following um, social medias, such as Facebook at www facebook.com forward slash a voice in the desert 2017 you can also find us at twitter at https semicolon forward slash forward slash twitter.com forward slash a the desert also username at the desert you can also find us at uh, at our blog okay which is my walk with my creator dot blogspot dot com uh, you can also get our RSS feed from uh, iTunes at a voice in the desert 
www.lipsing.com forward slash RSS. And Lipsing is spelled L I B S Y N. And you can also find us at our main webpage where you will find all our archived uh, podcasts, which will be a voice in the desert. Dot lipsing dot com, l i b s y n. Okay, so that's where you can find us, and uh, hope we see you there. Remember, uh, give us a like, give us a comment, uh, share your experience with us, and your experience with God. Okay, so take care, folks, and once again, thank you for listening. Bye.